The white-tailed spider has emerged as one of the most feared venomous creatures in Australia. Its bite might not kill, but its reputation for making flesh rot is almost as terrifying. Is the infamy deserved? Paul Willis investigates the truth behind the legend. Out of the dark crevices they climb. These are sinister hunters in search of their prey. For more than two decades, the white-tailed spider has been feared as a flesh-rotting monster. Well, I was experiencing um, a lot of pain. There was a, a red rash and it was really annoying, irritable. It looked like she was going to lose her fingers. Her, the flesh had become very soft and um, I was becoming quite concerned. But perhaps this little spider doesn't deserve all the bad raps. I don't think we should regard them as the, the flesh-eating monster that's been portrayed by, you know, various people around Australia. It was the 1980s when media reports first linked the bite of the white-tailed spider to a severe form of skin ulceration known as necrotic arachnidism. Early this year, Terry Nemec was bitten on the ankle. This was the result. We asked the council and we've had people from pesticides coming. They said there were a lot of egg beds from the white-tailed spider. In 1999, it seemed that nothing had changed. The white-tailed spider was still being blamed for all manner of skin conditions. But at Newcastle's Mata Hospital, Dr Jeff Isbister wasn't so sure. It's at the point now that, you know, the next door neighbour knows or your relative or a friend will say, oh, that looks like a white tusk spider bite, such and such had one. So you're coming back from the beach? Yeah, I was with my friend Bridget and it was a really hot day. So 18 decided... months ago, Madeline Drew thought she too had been bitten by a spider. I was walking along a path near a vacant piece of land and um, I felt a sting and I looked down to see what it was and nothing was there. A visit to the doctor drew a complete blank. Within a week her finger was looking quite nasty so I then took it back to for a second opinion. And he said that um, venom had actually been inserted into my finger. As the flesh on Madeline's fingers became soft and bloated, her mum became very worried. An internet search soon turned up the likely culprit. Everyone was saying to me, white tail spider bite, and I was, must admit I was like, well, no. But like so many other bites blamed on white tail spiders, Madeline couldn't make a positive identification. So you've got no idea what actually bit you there? No, I have no idea at all. These thumbnail-sized arachnids are nomadic hunters, so they're often found in houses looking for their prey. Perhaps that's why they've been blamed by so many for so long. The spider itself is very common. These houses were searched where people developed ulcers and they found white-tailed spiders. Well, search many houses and you'll find white-tailed spiders. Jeff felt that misidentification was one factor in the development of the white tail's grave reputation. So, to put an end to 20 years of guesswork, he decided to conduct a definitive study of spider bites from around Australia. However, to do so, he needed a spider expert, someone who could accurately identify spiders. Enter Mike Gray, an arachnologist from the Australian Museum. It was the first time that we could perhaps get a handle on what really was happening uh, with white-tailed spider bites. 
We collected patients who either presented to an emergency department or made a call to the major poison centres in Australia. Um, if they had been bitten by a spider and had collected the spider, then they were asked to be involved in the study. While Jeff studied the medical condition of the patients, Mike Gray identified the spiders that the patients had brought in to see whether they were, in fact, white-tailed spiders. There are two common species that people usually encounter, and these are the ones that account for most of the bites. Here we have the uh, common spider around eastern Australia, the Lampona murina, and to identify them, what you have to do is look at their genitalia. So we also have the female genitalia here and the male genitalia here, the male palp. The task of accurately identifying spiders is not one for the novice. But there were times when even experts like Mike found it hard. A lot of the mistakes occur with animals which are brought in by the public because they've been squashed or they've been dismembered or they've been <laughs> destroyed in some way or other because uh, people have had a go at them before they brought them in. In all, Mike identified 130 white-tailed spiders as part of the study, all of which had bitten somebody. But just how toxic is the venom of the white-tailed spider? The toxicity to other spiders, for example, which make their main prey, is quite great. Far from being the villain, white-tailed spiders might actually help control the numbers of other spiders, including the truly dangerous redback. But can it be blamed for skin necrosis in humans? After nearly four years of work, the results of the study can now replace a 20-year myth with undeniably solid facts. The study had 750 Australian spider bites, and out of those, 130 were white-tailed spider bites, and none of those 130 had um, ulcers or necrosis, or nor did any of the other 750. Jeff and Mike's work had finally showed that the white-tailed spiders were in the clear. Good news for the spiders, but what of the many patients whose ulcerations caused them to be misdiagnosed as white-tailed spider bites? Jeff confirmed that the ulcers all trace back to something else. A range of conditions, from golden staph infections to infected ulcers and all misidentified by doctors as white-tailed spider bites. If what the patient actually has is skin cancer or a bacterial or fungal infection, if that's not treated, that can go on and, you know, have serious consequences. The white-tailed spider may not rot your flesh, but caution is still required. It does have a bite which can be painful and which can take a long time for the effects to completely go away. But I think if it happens, people don't need to be concerned about developing ulcers or flesh-eating disease. It just doesn't happen.